The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Robots. I love them. You probably love them too if you clicked on this video. Well, today I'm going to be building a type of robotic arm called a continuum robot. Now, that's a great technical term, but I think a better name would be a robotic tentacle. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around and let's dive in. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. They say that nature doesn't use wheels, and for the most part, that's right. My shoulder doesn't have a thrust bearing, my knees don't have DC gearboxes, yet. But scientists did discover this weird little flea that has like a geared leg mechanism that is super weird. But regardless, if we want to make something move organically, maybe we should use more organic principles of actuation. My finger has muscles that allow it to flex and extend. And if I contract or lengthen those muscles, I can move my finger precisely. So why can't we do this kind of thing with robots? Now there's lots of different ways to do this, but continuum robots are a really interesting and fairly simple way to get this kind of organic movement. So why don't I jump into the mechanism to explain this a bit better. So what I have in my hands here is the core sub assembly that will make up the skeleton of my continuum arm. And it has a few key features that I'll go over. Now the discs form up the heart of the structure and these are coupled together with some 3D printed adapter plates and these adapter plates are specifically designed to mate to teeny tiny universal joints. Now it's not necessary to use universal joints um, for a build like this but I had them and they were super cool. Um, most importantly, I need to allow rotation along two axes, but not twisting. No twisting action, because if I want to bring these two discs together by uh, contracting uh, a thread right there, then I want the holes to align and I want them to stay aligned. If I could twist um, these discs independently, then the holes would be misaligned and we wouldn't get um, the force along that axis that we want. So with this joint, I'll need something that can pull these together. So my tendons will actually be made of Kevlar thread of questionable quality. So now that I've got the Kevlar thread fished through the holes on the continuum segments, it's a little bit easier to demonstrate how this works. If I uh, pull the thread here and relax it down here, it will contract up top and vice versa. Very straightforward. Now, I won't be using my hands to do this manually, or else this wouldn't really be an electronics project. Instead, I'll be using some large servos along with some 3D printed pulleys. Now, this is just a two-segment piece, so why don't I go make a few more? I've gone ahead and added eight more segments to my arm for a grand total of 10, which I feel is sufficiently tentacular for this test. Now, there's a lot more to do mechanically. I still need to attach the tendons through all of the segments. I need to attach the pulleys, and I need to mount it to something so it doesn't flop all over the place. Plus, I should probably add something fun to the tip. It's pretty plain as is. I'll also need to figure out a controller to drive everything. Why don't we just cut to a time lapse? Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. 
For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. So, we're almost ready for prime time. I've gone ahead and added a couple things that I think will be interesting. Namely, I added a little tiny claw at the end here, and we'll test out how much this can hold here in a second. All of the Kevlar is fed through and wound around the pulleys. Um, so there's three total servos, and I've just got the power wires running down here along the side. I've got this support beam, which mounts into an old monitor base, just some junk I had lying around. And everything is fed into an Arduino Mega. Do I need to use an Arduino Mega? No, of course not. But I've had it for a long time, and I kind of feel bad for it because I don't put it in anything. And for control, I've just got three potentiometers. This is literally the demo sketch. I've just added three more instances so that I can directly control the servos. This is very much a prototype of a concept. This isn't meant to be a final build, and we'll figure out uh, what we need to do to make this better in the future. That's about it. This is a very simple test, but let's go ahead and power it up and see what happens. So we had a bit of a problem. It turns out that the Kevlar on PLA, there's just no friction there. So it was just sliding and that meant it couldn't tension uh, the string, which totally, you know, makes this not work at all. Which meant that I needed to redesign the pulleys. Uh, initially, I just cut a little bit out of the plastic and fixed it to the tip of the servo horn but then I realized that I should just redesign it to be a little bit better. So I've installed new pulleys that have a high wall flange to keep the thread more secure, and now it is screwed into the pulleys too, which means things are nice and tight. So let's go ahead and test this out again. Okay, so I've got my five volt power supply here. Let's just plug that in. So by default, it'll be in the neutral position. And I've got my three potentiometers here for each of the axes. Good. Good. All right, let's try the other one. There we go. Now, you'll notice that it doesn't curl very much. And that's because the pulleys, well, they can only rotate 90 degrees in either direction. If I wanted uh, a much tighter arm, I would have to uh, have motors, probably some stepper motors or something that could curl up and allow it to spool up quite a bit more. But let's give it a tool. Let's, uh, let's, let's let you hold on to that. That's very satisfying. I don't think it's going to be helping me around the shop like uh, Tony Stark, but it's close. A little bit. All right, let's try something else. All right, screwdriver. Oh, let's. Release it. The claw is very satisfying to play with though. Let's go with Sharpie, open wide. I'm trying to make sure I'm not overloading the, the claw. Robots, they don't listen. So getting used to the dynamics of how it's actually going to move is pretty interesting because, well, it doesn't move like a normal robot arm, granted, I've never actually used a real robot arm, but I feel like they move a little bit differently than this. So, what did we learn today? I'm not quite sure, but uh, I did have fun. I hope you enjoyed my Continuum Robot Tentacle. I definitely learned a lot of things about the mechanical design of this. I have watched so many videos on this, but like with anything, research is only half of it. Practice matters so much, and the simple act of physically building this has really given me a lot of tangible knowledge that I can take for future versions. And I definitely want to make a more robust 
version of this arm. Maybe make a few more. Did I mention that my mother's maiden name is Octavius? Isn't that weird? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this build. As always, you can find details for the parts and code and anything related to this project. Or if you just want to talk to me, you know, hang out in the Element 14 community. I'm there. I'll be there. We can be friends. Um, head on over to element 14 got Got com dot com forward slash presents and I'll see you guys next time.